This morning I woke up to a light dusting of frost and a pale pink sunrise emerging from the horizon after many weeks of heavy rainfall. Mornings are still dark up until 8 o'clock and waking up for sunrise is easy this time of the year, albeit very cold. I wrap up warm, in fact, don't get fooled by my lightly dressed appearance here, as I am wearing five layers of clothing, but my face and hands still get cold on these long morning walks. Today I finally feel like a fully functioning human being again. It's as though my thoughts cleared out just like the sky after the rain, after weeks of heavy brooding. I can't say I'm fully there yet. Every now and then my mind wanders and brings up past anxieties and worries, but overall I am indeed on the path to healing. The river flooded most of the footpaths and fields where I used to go so often. Just a few weeks ago I ran through these fields meeting another sunrise, but today it's home to flocks of birds, seagulls, swans and geese. Wildlife seems to be happy about this expanded habitat, and I can only look at the view from the distance, admiring how the sky reflects in the still water and hoping that things will go back to normal without any sufficient damage. Each day I try to find ways to add joy into my life in the midst of freezing winter. It's really all in simple things. Bringing home a bunch of colorful tulips to remind myself of spring. Lifting my face up towards the cold winter sun. Baking a cake for no particular reason, just to help me bear through the long winter nights. I made a carrot cake for the first time. It's one of those desserts I have a love-hate relationship with as I am very particular about the way I like it. It's always either too dry or too sweet or too heavy, but I wanted to try and make my own version of it. I will, as always, include the full recipe in the description. I often think about my life, its purpose, the reasoning behind everything I do. 
it's silly, but I used to only do things which I thought may bring me closer to who I wanted to be. A noun. A musician, a photographer, a filmmaker, a baker or journalist or engineer or anthropologist. I bothered so much about efficiency and productivity, about doing the right thing, a monetizable thing, if you will. I never realized that there is so much more beyond that. I went to film school, studied to become a filmmaker, thinking that going on a linear path, getting a degree, then a steady job in that same profession, is the only way to do it. Until I met a person who told me that they studied history and science, and that's much more valuable in filmmaking than a film degree is. It expands your horizon, at the point of view someone who had only learned about cameras wouldn't have. It sounded so simple, yet so mind-blowing to me. I realized that the most interesting people I ever met are not nouns. They are verbs. They read, sing, make art, bake, hike, write, research, learn, live. They, of course, do things that are needed for pure survival, as we all do. But that's not what defines them. In fact, nothing defines them but a pure desire to live a full life. I would like to quote Oscar Wilde here. And not that the words of a somewhat hedonistic 19th century writer are the most accurate depiction of our lives today. I think this quote bears some relevance to what I'm trying to say. If you want to be a grocer, or a general, or a politician, or a judge, you will invariably become it. That is your punishment. If you never know what you want to be, if you live what some might call the dynamic life, but what I will call the artistic life, if each day you are unsure of who you are and what you know, you will never become anything, and that is your reward. I would like to add that, in my opinion, there is nothing wrong with knowing exactly who you want to be, and sometimes being lost and not knowing your purpose is quite unbearable. But I see this more as an invitation to experiment and explore what you don't know. It's not about being unrealistic, dropping everything and plunging into the abyss of unknown, but about intentionally adding little activities into your life which bring nothing but pure joy. It's about noticing how the sky turns bright orange above the horizon, how clouds turned pink and dissipated in just a few seconds before your eyes. The warmth of winter sun as it touches your skin for the first time. Tiny spider webs covered in frost, glistening like crystals in the morning sun. Little, insignificant details that make life worth living. Or most significant of all? I will leave you here today, as I continue pondering over these thoughts. January is for endless musings, the stretch of time between who we've been and who we'll become. 
a blank page, and intermission, a moment of suspense. A month of stillness before the chaos of life comes again as a whirlwind and sweeps us into the wonderful, messy, beautiful state of existence. I hope you take a moment to notice something beautiful today, no matter how small. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.